The Angry Chicken is a production of AMOVE TV. Bookmark AMOVE.TV for more gaming and esports shows. The Angry Chicken is directly supported by listeners like you via patreon.com slash TAC. about Hearthstone, Heroes of Warcraft. This is the Angry Chicken. Greetings and welcome back, everyone, to the Angry Chicken. I'm Garrett. She's Joss. And there is so much to talk about today. Oh, my God. Uh, Jocelyn, I need caffeine. I need it now. <laughs> yeah, they definitely dropped a ton of stuff we got a new patch we got a new expansion announcement we've got cards to talk about man there's there's a lot of hearthstone going on this week yeah yeah it's uh it's a little ridiculous it's a little, it's a little ridiculous how much stuff there is going on um but before we get into it uh just so we don't forget to thank the people who need thanking more than anyone else the folks supporting us over at patreon.com slash tac yeah we've got a patreon that's how you can support the show and to our most recent patrons Antonio A. Jujitsu Jedi. I don't want to mess with that. It's a Jedi that knows jujitsu? No. Uh. Seems like a dangerous combination. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And also, Kevin O. Thank you for the support, everybody. Um, but with that in mind, let's just get right into it. Good news, everyone. The next expansion has been announced earlier than I thought it was going to be because there's been so much going on in this game. Hearthstone has not stopped. It won't. It refuses to quit, Jocelyn. It is too legit. (laughs) Too legit to quit. Um, Yeah, our next expansion is going to be Saviors of Uldum. It's we're, we're going to Oldham, but so is Dalaran with rockets strapped to it and plagues are being unleashed and the League of Explorers are back and I couldn't be more excited because I love the League of Explorers, Jocelyn. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this. so I completely agree with you. This expansion, it, it's so funny because I feel like it was early because we've had so much news and normally we have this big, long drought before we get any kind of expansion announcement. But when you actually like look at a calendar like some people do, I guess, then we are in expansion season now like we should have been expecting this but because of you know we had buffs and nerfs of rise of the mechs and uh, arena rotations and just all this stuff has been going on with hearthstone lately that we didn't have the big like six to eight week drought of news and quietness before kabam announcement so i love the new pacing of what's going on in hearthstone and i hope they keep it going yeah yeah i, I do too like could you imagine if we just keep this up like, what if there's buffs on the regular? Like, if we have a buff event once per, like, mid-expansion cycle on top of everything else that they're doing? Like, it's, um, it's kind of crazy. Like, it, it would, it, it would, it, like, th- th- this, the beginning of this year, starting with uh, the Rise of Shadows, has been such a good tempo for this mm-hmm. game in, in, terms of, in terms of regular updates. And uh, I, I hope to keep it up. Cadence? I would not say cadence. That's a bad word. We don't say cadence. I, I'm, as a Heroes of the Storm player, uh, uh, that is a that is a banned word. I would like to see it patched out, like uh, yeah. like certain art might be being patched out. <laughs> can we patch cadence out of our vocabulary? Please. Oh, you can, you. you can try. You can try. But, um, yeah, so what, do, oh my God, what did you think of the trailer? I could, oh, it was so 80s-tastic. I love, I feel like we see this every time, but I'm trying to like calm myself down. I feel like we see this every time, but I really mean it. I mean it 100% when I say I think this is the greatest song, the greatest trailer in the history of Hearthstone. I really enjoyed the Kobolds and Catacombs song. I, I really, really liked it, but... This one for sure had that like extra 
hype factor. And maybe it's because of, you know, us growing up in the late 80s, early 90s. Like this just was us. I feel like <laughs> definitely target audience right here. So I, I totally get that. But at the same time, I was just like, I'm sitting there, I'm listening, I'm jamming. I'm like, yeah, let's go, let's go, let's go. I want to go save Old Doom. Like, I haven't thought about that zone in like seven years. <laughs> yeah. Was, it is the most important thing to me ever, and it needs saving. <laughs> Man, yeah, Cataclysm in World of Warcraft kind of did a number because in Vanilla WoW, there were, the entrance to Oldham was there, but you couldn't go. And it was like, oh my God, yeah. what's there? It's crazy. And you would read up about the lore of Oldham, and there were all these questions. And then we finally got to go there, and it was Cataclysm, and it was an okay expansion. And uh, <laughs> they, they, everyone was way, at least I was, way more jammed on, on Oldham. Uh, before I got to go there then, then after the fact. <laughs> um, but, but I mean, it's such a great aesthetic. I mean, it's, it's just, just like crazy over the top fantasy Egyptian to the max. Uh, so totally works. Uh, I, I like the setting um, as far as bringing back more characters that are unique or mostly unique to Hearthstone. Uh, the, 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 the freaking the league of explorers, man, I, I love them. Like we, 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 we got all the, all of the villains back in Rise of the Shadows. They're not going anywhere. They're clearly coming back <laughs> in in Saviors of Uldum. But if we had to if we had to pick anyone else out from like the history of of, of Hearthstone now and, and the characters that have kind of rise to celebrity within Hearthstone specifically, and yeah, Reno Jackson exists in or wait, no, I'm thinking of Harrison Jones. Yeah. Never mind. No, every, everybody How could I from, confuse uh, Except for Bran. Bran Bronzebeard yeah. is a Warcraft character. Oh, that's but... right. Yeah, Bronzebeard and, and, and retroactively Sir Finley has shown up yeah. and so on and so forth. But yeah, just love the League of Explorers. I think they're just fun as hell. Um, I don't know why I like Elise as much as I do, but I do. Like, she's been back. <laughs> this is her third time returning now. I really like Elise. I love her cloak. It's wonderful. My my favorite Sir Finley because I love Murlocs. I love the idea of a gentleman Murloc that can actually speak English, but it still sounds like a Murloc, and he's wearing a freaking monocle. Um, so I'm really happy to see Sir Finley back. But but all in all, it, but the only way you could have made me slightly happier about all of these callbacks to Hearthstone's history is if I don't know Dalaran somehow like did a near miss on Karazhan and we brought in the really charming version of Medivh from One Night in Karazhan. <laughs> like that's the only thing uh, that's really missing that I would like to see. <laughs> Yeah. And so the one that you did mention about like Reno and Elise and everybody coming back and that Rafam and the League of Evil are still here. So what I'm actually really interested to see is if we get yet another Rafam and another Boom and another Hagatha, like if they get new cards every expansion. I'm interested to see what this whole like overarching Year of the Dragon story that they're trying to tell how that actually ends up playing out in game in terms of like cards and mechanics. Are we going to see the what fifth Dr. Boom at this point? <laughs> or I, 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 are, we, are we not actually going to get another like card for the league? If we're just going to get um, more like reforms plague or whatever. I think that's what it's going to be. I, I would be yeah. so like, I'm going to plant a flag and say, no, we're not going to see another reform. We're not going to see another boom. Um, but we are going to see things like Rafam's Plague. Uh, you know, we're going to see allusions to the League of Evil, but I think the the actual members of the League of Evil, the actual League themselves, I think they're good because their cards are still in standard. Like, we can still have, you, you can still play your League of Evil cards and, and have a good time. Mm -hmm. I Yeah, I, I hope we don't see cards just if for no other reason than, you know, however many booms we have by now is enough. <laughs> So I don't think that we need to see more versions of them. It would just get super confusing. So, but it, it is kind of interesting though, that they chose to kind of introduce us to the league of evil in the first expansion. And then, you know, our, I guess even the defenders of Dalaran weren't as central to the story, I guess. So I, I am kind of also curious where they're going to go overall over the course of the year. Right. Cause now we've, They've gone to Dalaran, they stole it. They're flying it to Uldum for reasons as yet unknown, but we can probably guess that from, from lore perspectives. But they've they've journeyed now to Uldum. It needs to be defended. So now we've got defenders of Uldum that are somehow more important than defenders of Dalaran from a story perspective. So then are all nine of these characters then going to go somewhere else in for the last expansion? Like... I find this whole overarching storyline to be 
interesting, but also a little confusing. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't think you need to think about it too hard. It's, it's really loose. It's, it's a real loose tie. <laughs> it's supposed to be a little ridiculous, and it is. I mean, in this, first of all, Reno Jackson flexes, and then an explosion happens. Okay? Like, that is the level of serious lore we're dealing with. <laughs> true. That's true. <laughs> um, it's, we're, I don't think we need to think about it too hard. Uh, it's a cool setting. It's where they wanted to go. They, they, I think they very much wanted to play with the League of Explorers again. Uh, and Uldum is absolutely a place where it would make sense for them to show up. It also makes sense as a place to have some sort of uh, artifact of power that the uh, mm -hmm. League of Evil might want to steal. Uh, so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm fine with it. Anything to get the League of Explorers back, I do not care. And the trailer was amazing. So, Agreed. Very, and I really, good. really enjoyed the announcement video because there was the trailer and then the announcement video that had the trailer inside of it. But I think Hadija did a really, really good job. And not to throw any shade at any of like the previous Hearthstone announcement videos, but... Her sitting in a chair with her like deadpan sense of humor is way more a lot like aligned with my sense of humor, I guess. Like I looked, I thought she was freaking hilarious when she right at the very end when she's like, I guess they're going to win because then there wouldn't be a third book. So yeah, we're all really in suspense here. I was like, I love you. And that's my favorite line of any Hearthstone video ever. Oh really love dry deadpan humor and yeah Hadija yeah. is wonderful and it works really well for like the masterpiece theater like sitting in an armchair thing like I love Dave Kozak yeah. but I feel like he I loved his his armchair with League of Evil but like him in a lab really works because the dude just has a mad scientist air to him true true uh, DJ, like, it was it killed me it, I yeah. was very happy happy with uh with Hadija getting in front of the camera again and uh, and and it was just a good pick for for yeah. this rundown of the expansion. So um, I had a I, I thoroughly enjoyed this entire announcement, and um, and it just feels it feels strong. Like Hearthstone just feels really strong right now. Like I said, um, they've just been knocking it out of the park now for months mm -hmm. in a row with new thing yep. after new thing after new thing, and uh, I'm just I'm just impressed, and I'm excited to see if this is just. I'll use the word, the Hearthstone cadence from now on. <laughs> well, and we also, I don't think we mentioned uh, with patch 14.6 that came yesterday, we've got pre-order bundles for it now. We've got a release date. So it's August 6th, which I think this is the first time that's ever happened where we've gotten an announcement and a release date all at the same time. And it's like, hey, guess what? In a month, this will be in your hands. Ta-da! <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's all, all, I mean, they've been doing the release date with the announcement for a while now, right? But like it, it hasn't been this fast of a turnaround. I'm like pre-order is in the store, by the way, just go yeah. get yourself an Elise, <laughs> you know, have fun. Uh, yeah. But there's, there's two bundles again. We've got a 50 card and an 80 card bundle. Um, you can get Elise as a Druid hero. Yeah. Which is another really interesting conversation to have because in the, original rise of shadows so the first uh dragon year of the dragon expansion we had all of our league of evil here uh villains i was gonna say heroes but that was our villains were tied to specific classes there's four classes remaining that don't have like a big lore year of the dragon character tied to them so it seems like those four classes are going to get the league of explorers heroes so we're going to have reno at least for surfinley and bran tied to a class if we're following the same sort of rise of shadows feel so if that's true then who is what because i kind of thought that maybe elise was a mage but then with the pre-order bundle she's going to be a druid hero so i'm kind of like hmm does that mean they're going to stay neutral or are they all going to be playable like how is the or like playable for any class? Like, how is that actually going to manifest itself in terms of the cards when we see them? Because I would have assumed Elise would have been mage. Bran maybe would have been druid because he's riding on a T-Rex. So that kind of gives me like beastie, big druidy vibes. Then like Sir Finley, I guess you could make him a paladin because he's got that golden fish, which if that is not a paladin weapon, I am going to just riot and quit Hearthstone because that is the best thing I've ever seen. <laughs> That was my favorite scene from the trailer with Sir Finley <laughs> whacking things like golden fish. Oh, man. So, yeah, I would say, you know, that's... I definitely, and then I definitely read Rito, the golden hunter, fish. Maybe? I don't know. I read the golden fish as confirmed paladin. <laughs> yeah. But, 
but yeah. I know technically it's a devil sore, T-Rex, devil sore, whatever. Same thing, guys. <laughs> oh my, uh, don't, don't, don't reply to the living YouTube comments in real time. <laughs> Even though sometimes I'm the living YouTube comment. <laughs> Excuse me, pushes up glasses. It's a devil sore. It's Same devil deal, sore guys. Same deal. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, because yeah, it's not, it's not like who is Reno? Reno's just like a dude with, I mean, I, I will get down with the, with the chat room, uh, interpunct, uh, on the chat room says Reno obviously is a mage. All mages have epic facial hair, so huh. with like the seventies porn stash, yeah, yeah, I could totally see Reno as, as, as a mage. Yeah, I guess I can see that. I think it's just, it's like in the trailer you had a lease with like the book and all the glowy mage looking effects. And, Although and I a, guess Reno Reno could also he had his like I would thinking maybe Reno would be a hunter because Reno has that big weapon that's like shooting the crystals that kind of gives me like gunny type vibes. But then I was like, hmm, maybe you know crystals are a magey thing. That's kind of arcane missily. I I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it's it, it, it's 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 tough. Uh, really, I just want to say Elise's new cloak, amazing. It's a great look. She should stick with it. She's rocking it. <laughs> ten out of ten. Wonderful. Uh, so yeah, yeah. It's um, I I want that Elise portrait. Really, is what it boils down to. It's very pretty. I already bought it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. I uh I haven't yet, but uh, I'm going to. <laughs> that's just you guys watching the video can see my shame. <laughs> that's just money that doesn't belong to me anymore. That's how exactly. this works. That's how this works. Yep. But uh, anyways, um, so the flow of today is going to be so we we we're obviously we're going to talk about the announcement itself. Some cards have been revealed. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. Right now, we're going to get move into patch 14, 14, 14. Point six because it's in the game right now. That's why we can even pre-order the expansion. It's because this patch came in and gave us that uh, that possibility. But it also brought with it quite a few updates to to Hearthstone. The, the, depending on your view of the game, and also, I, you know what? Frankly, compared to an expansion announcement, pretty minor changes, uh, but still noteworthy changes for sure. And the first thing I want to mention is the fact that they brought in arena matchmaking improvements for new players. They said that uh, matchmaking has been improved. Uh, quote, for players who are new to arena mode, these players will be matched against other new players with the same number of wins. Yeah, I think that's a really good chance. I think anything that gets more people into a better balanced matchmaking system, whether it's on, you know, ladder, standard, wild arena, anything, any changes to that that can help will uh, are good, I think, because you don't want anyone to just like get totally stomped in their first arena match, <laughs> even just because they're, you know, zero and zero. So they go in against, I don't know, Hafu. <laughs> like, that's <laughs> not a good experience. <laughs> I mean, you know, a lot of us are playing auto chess or auto chess like games right now. So if there was ever a time for, a, I think, a majority of gamers to be okay just having their butt handed to them on a platter, right now would probably be the time. Yeah. You get into that game, you've never played one before, you're probably getting beat up. But no, this is obviously good. This is obviously good, something I would have liked early in, early in Hearthstone's uh, lifespan because I was and still am not a particularly great arena player. Yeah, no, I, I'm terrible. <laughs> and that's, it's, so they say that it's um, players who are new to arena mode. And I wonder what the like caveat to that is does that mean players who've never played it before does that mean players who don't play often because i mean obviously i've had a hearthstone account since beta so but i've probably played i don't know every once in a while i dip my toe in play once get stomped never go back so am i still a new player with my like 100 arena wins might even be less than that i don't even know or am i you know a an existing player because I've had an account for a long time. So it's, yeah, I'm, I'm curious to know who this is actually for. Um, cause I hope it's for me because I, I want to get in there and learn, not get in there and get stopped. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There it's, it's a little, it's pretty vague in terms of how the system works, but, um, considering other new player improvements that they've implemented in the past, uh, I trust them here because they've done a good job with the ladder in my opinion. Fair enough. Fair enough. So, uh, anyways, uh, we also got some card changes. Uh, one of the one of the the biggest changes is actually a change to the way that you can play certain spells, specifically spells that target two random enemy minions. So, Dark Bargain, Cleave, 
multi-shot, and forked lightning can now be casted even if there is only one viable target on the board. Previously, you just weren't allowed to cast these if there was only one minion on board. Yeah, so, I mean, it, it's a buff, <laughs> which I think is, is a good thing. This, you know, gives you maybe another tool you didn't necessarily have before. So I still don't know if some of these are going to see play, but, I mean, they're better than they were, so. Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, if, I haven't played with Fork Lightning probably since the beginning of Hearthstone. <laughs> um you know, obviously these are cards, you know, you might be playing around with an arena, but as far as constructed is concerned, haven't seen a lot of play. A Dark Bargain, I had to look up just to remind myself what it even was. It's, it's, it's a Warlock spell that destroys two random enemy minions and then you discard two random cards. Um, but I don't think I've ever seen anyone play that card. <laughs> no, no. But it, it, it's a cool change because um, it's the kind of thing where, like, I understood why it didn't work that way, but it always felt like you should still just be because you're it's not like you're getting an insane out of insane amount of value if you had to use one of these cards and there's only one minion on the board mm -hmm. so i mean yeah you obviously still want to use it when you get the most value out of it so when there are multiple minions but it's nice that it's not stranded in your hand unplayable anymore if you did want to just use it to get rid of one thing i i, I like to think that someone on the team was just like Oh, man, I got like three games against mech, mech decks in a row and I was running Cleave because I'm trying something new and they just kept magnetizing. I can never use Cleave. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was just something, a very personal attack on a member of the team. But uh, it's still a good change and uh, makes me wonder if maybe there's more uh, two random minion target spells coming down the pipeline. Could be, could be. This could be like a back end change because they've got more. It doesn't even necessarily have to be two, but just like anything that's a specific number tied to a board effect, it's probably just a back end code change. Yeah. Uh, also, there are uh, the one cost minions that are generated by cards like Shadowcaster and Sonya Shadow Dancer will now receive the bonuses from Magic Carpet. You're going to get that plus one attack and rush now. Uh, I have not been playing with Shadowcaster or Sonya, so this is not something I even realized wasn't happening. Because, mm -hmm. you know, Magic Carpet needs more help. <laughs> I guess I say that, but I mean, it's only because I, you know, every once in a while you get that zoo warlock who gets the absolute nuts draw, and you're just like, oh man, I can't kill that carpet, and now I just lose. So, you know, you don't necessarily want to see it. <laughs> being buffed but it's a very like edge case scenario that's super powerful <laughs> yeah yeah uh and then pilfer has been updated to match recent changes to what they're calling other burgle cards so the text is being updated to from uh where you know it did read add a random card to your hand from your opponent's class it now reads add a random card from another class to your hand uh <laughs> So this, again, this is just for uh, mirror purposes so that you're actually getting another class's stuff instead of uh, if you go up against a rogue, then you wouldn't actually get other class cards, which then could disrupt a lot of your, you know, when you're holding a card from another class and everything else. It's like basically unintentionally nerfing some rogue decks that were playing around with burgle type effects. So good change. Keep yeah. it coming. If you're going to if you're going to make these cards, this is the way to do it. Yeah. Yeah, and then it does I'll, kind of suck because there's a little bit of a loss of potential synergy because, you know, if it's only your opponent's class, you know that every time you're generating the random cards from your opponent's class, they're all going to be the same. So you're going to potentially get some synergies there. But I think this is fine and better because there's more rogue mirrors than there are synergies between class cards <laughs> when you're getting a whole bunch of random yeah, cards. Yeah. Uh, also with this patch, all the new classic cards have been added. Which is which is a pretty huge change. So this is all the stuff that we talked about. Was it last week, week four? It was last week. Um, last week. Okay, yeah. So the, this is all the cards we talked about last week are in the, actually in the game now, which is which is good. Yeah. Again, the kind of thing I would have expected, like four weeks to go between, like, oh, there's new cards, and they also add a couple legendaries, and then we'll like be like four weeks of like, okay, yeah, here's the meta, here's that, and then we'll get an expansion announcement. But, but nope, nope, just. Big yeah, we're making new cards. Here they are. <laughs> followed by big announcement with the previous announcement being implemented into the game. <laughs> so it's, yeah. it's crazy right now. Um, and we're also going to be getting significantly more time with Tavern Brawls because the downtime is being reduced to only an hour per week. 
I think this is how tavern brawls always should have been. <laughs> it always felt very odd that there was yeah. that much downtime. However, I got really used to it. It just, I haven't thought about the downtime in a tavern brawl in a very long time. Um, not that tavern brawl as has been documented is my favorite mode or anything, but like it just was the norm. I hadn't thought about it in a while, so this is cool. Well, this feels much more with like any other game that I've played that does have patches that happen pretty often. And I've, obviously I've got wow in my head, like Tuesday's patch day. There's usually maintenance for about an hour. Game goes down. I go back in and I have the same game regardless of if I played it at, you know, like Tuesday at 9 a.m., which come on, guys, you know, I'm never awake at 9 a.m. But Tuesday at 9 a.m. or like Tuesday at 6 p.m., like it's the same game. They've just, you know, done little patches, hot fixes, maintenance, whatever. And so... The fact that you would like go into Tavern Brawl, which sometimes, or go into Hearthstone, which would sometimes have like patches and hot fixes and maintenance and whatever, like you would go in and then it's not the same game because that button just wasn't available for some weird reason that we were never really told, except for they were sweeping up the tavern after the brawl, which always seemed a little odd. So I, I like that basically, like with except for this hour long maintenance window, we're just going to be able to always push the tavern brawl button. So I think this is a good change. Yeah. Yeah, I do too. Uh, and then we, we get into what shouldn't be the most controversial subject <laughs> of the day, but it is uh, card art changes. Uh, they are changing the art or have changed the art for uh, quite a few cards uh, in, in Hearthstone. Um, the list is Bite, Eviscerate, Headcrack, Deadly Shot, Secret Keeper, Wind Fury, Harpy, Succubus, which is now a Fellstalker. <laughs> like, they didn't just change the card, they just also changed the demon that the card is. And Mistress of Pain, which they named to Queen of Pain. Yes. Yeah. Um, so the only one here where it's like super obvious to me as to why it was, well, two of them was changed is eviscerate and bite because eviscerate, the art actually hasn't changed. They just removed the blood, right? The blood in eviscerate is gone. Um, and then, so my head goes, okay, they're, they don't want blood in their card art anymore is the, is where my brain goes. And on bite, it was, it was, there was a lot of blood on the original card art of bite. And now it's just, uh, uh, actually I, I would say a rather dope painting, of a, of a druid in cat form uh, about to bite you. Yes. They should change the name though to about to bite. That would be pretty great. That'd be pretty great. It should just be big teeth. Arr. <laughs> <laughs> they just change it to rar. Is that yeah. it's just R A W R? Four mana. <laughs> Give your hero plus four attack this turn. Game four armor. Perfect. Uh, and then you just rar a moat when you play it. That would be so wonderful. That'd be so good. Little chat bubble comes out and just says rar. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, some people are uh, not taking this well, Joss. <laughs> yeah. And so obviously we don't have any actual explanation that's come out of Blizzard yet, which uh, does seem a little bit odd to me because when they changed Jaina, it was another one of these real big, you know, everyone's upset about it changes. So to me, if they're going to make similar changes to some cards, they should have understood that there was going to be some community uh even if you don't want to call it outrage or pushback just like not understanding why these changes were made like it's just it's it's kind of odd kind of out of nowhere and you should know based on past community reactions that this was going to potentially be problematic for some people when they aren't given a proper explanation so i think that that's problem number one is you know we've <laughs> we've talked for the entire you know duration of angry chicken for the last five years about team communication and being more open being more transparent letting us know what's going on and they've been doing such a good job and like we said they picked up the the i'm going to use the word because it's the one that's stuck in my head garrett i'm sorry the cadence of you know releases and announcements and everything communication everything's been getting so much better but then we have instances like this that you're just like you had a shot blizz you had a chance what's going on so I mean, we can obviously talk about and speculate why these changes may have come. And I think there's, you know, two possible potential uh, sources behind that or like reasons behind this. And I'm not sure which one it is. Maybe it's both. But to me, I look at this and uh, well, first of all, last year, the Chinese government basically reorganized and they ended up with a. Uh, like one specific department that is all about regulating 
what is and isn't allowed in games in China. And you can't argue the size of the Chinese game market. It is the biggest in the world. China has the most people. So you need to make sure that your game is still able to be accessed by that market. If you're a business, like it's, it's pretty much like business 101, right? Like tap into the biggest market. So, I mean, that uh, that regulatory group in China, or I guess a branch of the government, has uh, put forward new regulations. Uh, as far as I know right now, they're still in draft form, but they were developed alongside or uh, in, I guess, partnership with NetEase and a few other companies that operate in China. And as you guys know, NetEase is responsible for putting out Hearthstone in China. So these regulations that are, as far as I know right now, proposed, but probably going to go through, um, include not allowing blood in games anymore. So blood for a while has been allowed, but not, um, I guess, explicit. (laughs) So a lot of different companies got around this by, you know, even just changing the color. So like green blood in video games in China has been a thing for a really long time. So they're cracking down on that a little bit more to say that they don't want blood in games that are in China. And I should also say, this isn't all games in China. This is games that are potentially marketed to younger age groups. So there's that piece, the blood piece, but then the other piece is that the regulation also includes some stuff about, um, I guess, uh, sexual content as it specifically applies to women and their clothing and like percentage of coverage, shall we say. So all of that together in this new, uh, these new Chinese regulations could potentially be fueling again, like I say, it was, you know, developed in partnership with Netty. So could potentially be Blizzard wanting to make sure that they are complying to regulations that are coming down the pipe and wanting to keep their game consistent across the world because they could censor and apparently they already do uh, censor some art in China, but I can understand them wanting to keep things the same worldwide, especially when they're doing things like global games, when they're doing things like um, grandmasters granted the Chinese competition for grandmasters is separate and, and has been like, throughout all of Hearthstone Esports, they've had their own ways of actually qualifying to play in the final global tournament. But I can see it just, you know, wanting to keep the game consistent for broadcast reasons even. So that's like reason number one. And Garrett, jump in here anytime. I feel uh, like I've been I, talking I, forever. <laughs> you, you, you were doing such a good job. I didn't want to interrupt you. Uh, okay. <laughs> but uh, so, so to the broadcast uh, that I would say, I, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to pull up World of Warcraft as a comparison point and uh, talk about inconsistency uh, if that's the case. And, and really what really like my, my bottom line here is that I'm just mildly irritated there was no statement alongside these art changes. Oh yeah, uh, I am I, I am guessing guys. Like I don't yeah. know anything, but I'm just guessing. Yeah, at I don't the I, I don't know regulation it, stuff. It sure that is seems what has just happened. It basically. sure seems like that's the case. Yeah. What, what you're talking about like it's all signs a lot of signs point to that. Um uh, but we don't know. Uh but if it's let's say let's just hypothetically exist for the next 5 minutes let's go do you want a journey with me where we are in a world where that's the reason these changes were made that it's because sure. of, of, of I do of, have another p- potential re- reason though but yes. sure we can that, we can deal with China first. <laughs> yes. Uh so so Chinese sensibilities uh they they've historically had, had just like different versions of the undead in World of Warcraft. Yes. The undead model in World of Warcraft is different in the Chinese client than it is in our client here in the States and most of the rest of the world. Um, I same- believe it has something to do with the depiction of bones, yes. I think. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the bones are covered up where the undead yeah. models have their knees and their elbow joints kind of rotted away to where you can see exposed bone. They are completely covered up in uh, the Chinese version of the game. Uh, and yet, we have Mythic Dungeon Invitational. We have the Arena Esports, which are globally broadcasted, and we are working with our local, to us here in the, in North America, version of World of Warcraft with exposed bones and all. Um, so I, uh, that's inconsistent if that's the case. 
uh, and weird and whatever. It, uh, to me, I'm just really curious at this point. I, I find this kind of stuff pretty fascinating from uh, having to build a product for a global market uh, side of things. So I'd be like, be curious because like it, they get to do whatever the hell they want. Really, is at the at the end of the day, it's their product. They can do whatever the hell they want. But why why does why does Hearthstone have to conform its entire game to the standards of another country, and World of Warcraft gets to pick and choose and have multiple versions of its game for the sense? abilities of different countries well and i should say too um like i said this is this is new legislation in china and i don't know if there's some kind of like compliance time or if everyone has to comply or if i don't know enough about chinese video game regulation all i know is that this is new so if things have been done a certain way in the past like the different art in the Chinese client or, you know, whatever the case is, it might be that all of these regulations are just tightening up those loopholes, shall we call them, and that that's not going to fly anymore. <laughs> so, like, I, I don't know exactly what all of the, like, or if they have to, like, reapply or whatever the case is. Um, it's, it's a very, very highly regulated internet and market in China. So, it's its own beast and that could be the reason for making changes. Yeah. yeah. Reason we've, one. <laughs> yeah. And we've seen it before. So what, what's your other, what's your other uh, tinfoil hat theory? So the other one, oh, it's, it's not tinfoil hatty. I, I'm trying, I'm trying to figure out why these cards specifically would be changed. But anyway, so the second reason is a little bit closer to home with uh, the U S regulations. So there are, pieces of legislation being introduced over in the States that are specifically targeting loot boxes. And they are basically saying that anything that is rated mature is allowed to have loot box and gambling type mechanics, but anything with a rating like teen or lower is not allowed to have loot box type mechanics. So I don't know what that's going to mean for games like Hearthstone and Overwatch. And it's still a long way away from potentially being like actually made a law, but Let's say that Blizzard has figured out a way to remove loot box type mechanics from the game. Actually, maybe that this is going to sound a little bit tinfoil hatty, but just stick with me, guys. So Blizzard figures out a better way to deal with loot box type mechanics that keeps us buying but doesn't technically count as what is legislated loot boxes. So in that world, maybe other companies don't figure it out as quickly and the younger audience like the the pg level audience gaming space opens up because a lot of the other games get pushed into the mature category if that happens hearthstone might want to have a rating of instead of t which it currently is pg just to go a little bit younger in that market <laughs> so boy maybe I, what they're doing I'm... is trying to move themselves into and they, they could be doing this like even without all the loot box legislation and, and making money and getting new markets and all that kind of stuff even if that's not the reason that could like just getting a pg rating from the esrb could be something that they want in general although they are changing things for gore and they are changing things for um cartoon sexuality but hearthstone still takes place in a tavern hearthstone still has things like brewmasters like there's a lot of, cause that's the other reason that Hearthstone has a T rating is because of the depiction of alcohol consumption. So that would also be something that has to change in order for them to get a, a PG rating instead of a, a team rating. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think that's actually a, you know, a, not a completely insane theory, but I'm surprised you pushed back against tinfoil hat because that was a little tinfoil hatty. It, it was a little, as I was kind of <laughs> starting to explain it, I was like, oh yeah, this is, this is getting a little tinfoil hatty. And I didn't, I didn't necessarily mean it to be. I do think that you have to take like the larger gaming industry into account and like what's going on with laws in the country where the game is made. But yeah, it, it definitely got a little tinfoil hatty there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I am well aware that kids play games above their rating but i mean the ratings have to do with bigger things than who's actually playing the game it's about marketing it's about advertising that's what is being legislated obviously it's always going to come down to if parents are actually regulating what their kids are playing or not but 
it's still the reason that ratings are there and laws and rules are there is to attempt to make it so that kids don't play these games. Whether they end up doing it or not is way beyond the reach of the U.S. government as it should be. (laughs) But yeah. 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 And all the more reason why it would be interesting to hear from the team as to why these changes were made. Uh, Because like I first look at it, I'm like, oh, these are all just from an art perspective so much more consistent with the style of Hearthstone as it is now. A lot of these cards that were changed, basically all of these cards that were changed, uh, were old school art. It was art that was reused from the original WoW TCG. And, mm-hmm. and Hearthstone has really uh, kind of solidified a style, even though they still they still go about creating their art in like as, in the way that like all card games do by commissioning all different types of illustrators with wildly different styles. They do all blend well. They all do play with within the realm of what Hearthstone looks like um, in a way that it looks consistent without being too samey. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that was my gut reaction when I saw all of this. Um, and, it, and But Eviscerate is like this weird kind of thing that breaks that that line because like, oh, you didn't change the art, you just got rid of the blood. Okay, so cl- so like the only thing is like, I'm like, <laughs> I'm looking at Viscera, I'm like, clearly violence is an issue. <laughs> like, <laughs> clearly. And it does it does appear that sexual content is somewhat an issue. Like, there's no way around that. Uh, but they won't, don't, won't make a statement about it. And I don't necessarily blame them because people freak the hell out over their illustrations of what they consider sexual. Mm-hmm. on both sides <laughs> so yeah i don't know i don't know what the what the proper answer is here um i got nothing i will say the queen of pain looks dope because it's pretty much the Jaina dreadlord model from heroes of the storm mm-hmm. and it's awesome yeah i really like is there are some pieces of the art that the changes that i really like i mean it's it's kind of hard to you know like succubus doesn't look anything like fell stalker they just yeah she's just gone yeah succubus <laughs> is just and, gone and the other thing too yeah. is like even if like we're even if we like want to <laughs> lack of better terms if we want to flirt with the sexual discussion um <laughs> mistress of pain was not like overt like like i don't look at that and think oh overtly sexual like succubus i'm like okay yeah there's a lot of cleavage going on there but mistress of pain was like pretty covered up in the realm of demons in warcraft like like yeah i think the the mistress of pain was more the name right because that that was the biggest change she got an art change too but queen of pain is very different in terms of sexual connotations than mistress like yeah and then that's where i go with succubus right because succubus yeah. in in like lore in fairy tales that's that's literally what they did was you know lure and seduce so yeah right Makes sense. Um, yeah, so maybe that's just the case. And they figured, well, while we're updating art, why not? Or maybe they had this this awesome Queen of Pain art for just laying around. Like, oh, let's just, let's do it. Um, even though I think they could have just used the same old art and been fine. But whatever the case is. Um, I actually but like yeah, these new I, illustrations. I like Queen of Pain. I like Secret Keeper too. Yeah, yeah, it's they, they're looking great. The, honestly, the one that like bugs me the most is Deadly Shot. I'm like, this, it was like a silhouette of an, of an arrow going through a torrent. It was like super mundane. What the hell? Hey, you know what? I have my own problems with the deadly shot art that this one fixes. So I'm totally fine because that Torin was wearing freaking Alliance armor and Torins are horde. So at least for the time being, <laughs> so that was my big thing is he should have been in like red armor, not blue armor, but, <laughs> and yeah, it was definitely impaled for sure. Um, and there was like the, the latter part of the arrow that had passed through the torrent was covered in red blood and it was dripping and, you know, like I can see, it's just that like, those aren't the kind of things that I notice until I looked at old eviscerate art and new eviscerate art. I guess I'm just totally desensitized to blood says the girl who plays dead by daylight, but I, it didn't even click to me what the change was. And then I was like, Oh, right. The gore. <laughs> but yeah, I, it didn't even, I didn't even look at these cards and think, Oh, bloody. <laughs> Same. But yeah, again, uh, I like horror movies. So yeah. <laughs> a little bit of red on my card art isn't going to really bother me. And also like, I know you haven't played a lot of magic, but have you seen like, art on magic cards specifically like black magic cards it gets dark (laughs) so dark 
It goes places, Joss. It goes places. Yeah. By comparison, <laughs> anything that has ever existed at Hearthstone looks like Fisher Price by comparison. Mm. And I say that with all the love in the world. I love the art in Hearthstone. And I like the art of these new cards. Well, and I think that's the thing, right? Hearthstone has always been definitely on the cartoony side of things versus something like magic, which I think has a more painterly realistic feel to their art, at least from the cards I've seen, which are admittedly not many. Um, but I feel like they take that magic has always seemed a little bit more um, serious, high fantasy versus Hearthstone's like cartoony haha type fun attitude, I guess is the best way to, to kind of compare them. So I guess when that's why when I looked at, these cards it just like it, it's cartoony in my head so it doesn't like raise flags like yeah yeah and and like my last thought on this you know because the love guy we got new cards to talk about but um, i know <laughs> I, I did I, I did it just it this folks have been freaking out like i don't, I don't even care about the freak out like there's just other parts of this that i find interesting um the chinese thing is, is a big thing that i find interesting because blizzard has historically for a long time now had to contend with that and it, and it would appear from the outside looking in that this is playing a role um, but the other thing is um, the, the the talk of reprints keeps coming up. We haven't had, honest to God, reprints. It's something I would still like to see come to this game. Um, but in in physical card games, reprints happen. And a lot of the times, the, the reprint will come out. The card can be the same and have different art. And it's really cool if you've been a historical, like, longtime player of a physical card game when a reprint happens and the card art changes, it feels cool as a collector that you have the old card with the old art and that that if anything here for me is a bummer it's that like i don't i don't care i don't care if i don't need my succubus to have all the cleavage in the world like i'm on the internet if i need that i can get it wherever i need it <laughs> like, uh, i don't it, it's not a requirement of hearthstone um what is a bit of a bummer is i wish i could have this old art to as like i wish they like did a cutoff like from this point on if you start playing hearthstone this is the new card art and and everyone else you're gonna get double copies of these cards with the new card art you can use it if you want i want to feel special and 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 kind of show my the history of my journey with this game and have these old cards laying around which again i think i feel like it's because it is it's a digital card game and exists in many different markets that they they can make these changes to comply to new regulations right like that's got to be the reason so i think that uh, it's the kind of situation where they couldn't have the old art lying around i guess because then it's breaking the rules right <laughs> so i i understand where you're coming from with like wanting to have the your original collection and 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 hold on to that in in some way but i think it's just because it's a digital card game we have to be a little bit more open to card changes in general and sometimes that's going to look like a nerf sometimes that's going to look like a buff sometimes that's going to look like an art change and it's just one of those things that as a ccg we need to accept because it's it's basically it's the pros and cons of the fact that they can change the game whenever they want yes but also it's digital, so it, it 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 hasn't felt like this over the history of Hearthstone, but it always felt, especially in the early days, like anything's possible, so why limit yourself uh, is where I go with that. Um, but really, I mean, I, I get it. Like, if that's the reason they're doing it, and like, if they came out with a statement saying, sorry, Hearthstone's just harder to have unique versions of it existing across multiple regions, and that's why we decided to make these changes, that's a business decision. I respect that. Mm -hmm. Like, you got to do it. You got to do it. Maybe it's just easier to have two different versions of WoW than it is two different versions of Hearthstone. That makes sense. But um, if that's not the case, like, I don't, I don't care either way. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just saying my feeling is it would have been so much cooler if I could have held on to the old versions of these cards. Well, and maybe that's a feeling that they just didn't necessarily take into account. I mean, really and truly, if you could hang on to the old version of Eviscerate, but let's say for a regulatory reason or whatever, that you weren't allowed to put it in a deck that you would play, how often would you really go back into your collection to look at that art? Like, even even if we take the the playing it and putting it in decks and stuff out of it, like, how often do you just go look at your card collection? Like, is, is oh, this a real problem? <laughs> uh, uh, well, well, because Eviscerate is like one of... V v Eviscerate, Deadly Shot, these are cards that are still seeing play to this day and will see continue seeing play until they are nerfed into the ground or moved Maybe off. Maybe Succubus would have been the best example there. Succubus... <laughs> like, when's the last time you looked at Succubus? <laughs> it is fair, yes. That is that is a fair point. But Evis, 
Secret Keeper, Deadly Shot. Some people screw around with head crack every now and then, but it never sticks. But whatever the case is, if any of the cards may one day possibly be playable, it would be cool to have the old art. Um, and I'm, I'm just talking about feeling. I'm just talking about feeling. If, if they if they just say, sorry, this is how it's going to be, I can live with that. That's fine. I don't, it's not that big of a deal for me. But I yeah. do think, uh, you know, as a player of many different types of card games, it's the first place my brain went. It's, oh, I, I want to feel like a collector. Yeah. And, and I think that that's the kind of thing where like you're a collector. If you look at things like card backs, like I wouldn't ever expect card backs to change, but at the same time too, because chat rooms right now is saying like, Oh, remember the like, pre-order your $80 Druid that can be altered at any time. Yeah. Like I, I don't, and maybe it's because I'm used to playing games as a service is the way that games are generally going now. But I mean, between, and I, I know I'm probably in the minority too, but when I think about things like my Netflix catalog or the game that I play that has patches all the time, I don't, I basically think of it as I am paying for access to something, but I don't actually own any of it. It's not my product. I don't make it. I don't have a physical disc of anything. Whatever it is that I am paying for, that's the way that it is. And if they change it in a way that I don't like, I stop paying for it and I don't have access anymore. I don't have any kind of concept of ownership over things because of the way games as a service and Netflix subscription or not Netflix, sorry, I said Netflix again, but subscription services in general. I don't have any feeling of ownership over my stuff anymore <laughs> well i guess it's, uh, for me uh they've done such a good job of making it feel tactile that i have an emotional mm. attachment to it well that's uh, your own damn fault garrett get over it <laughs> do you want do you just want me to say rest in peace uh secret keepers booty is that what you want to hear me say jocelyn yes all right well <laughs> rip booty i will i will miss the booty uh, <laughs> that's gonna do it for that talk uh, we're gonna take a quick break and we'll be back with some card talk Boy, podcasting makes me hungry, Joss. I know. And the other thing about podcasting when we do is that I never have a big chunk of time for dinner on Tuesdays. So I'm, I'm really stoked that when we're, we're sponsored by HelloFresh because uh, it is actually helpful. Folks, if you're unfamiliar with HelloFresh, well, they're, they're the meal kit delivery service. They're going to show up on your doorstep with a box full of ready-to-cook meals. Uh, and it's it's super simple. And, and if I can cook these meals and make them look good and make them taste good then you know you can do it because I am I am uh, culinarily challenged. Um, so they, they, That's a really good way to put it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. If you've never used them before, they've got step-by-step -step recipes with pre-measured ingredients. You're going to have everything that you need to get a wow-worthy dinner on the table in just about 30 minutes. And there's something for everybody. They've got uh, family recipes. They've got calorie smart and vegetarian options. They also have a fun menu series like Hall of Fame and Craft Burgers. I'm doing a Hall of Fame tonight. I'm not even joking. I've got like my recipe card right here, so I don't forget what the heck it was. But it's pork carnitas tacos, Jocelyn. Ooh, I had quesadillas with pineapple in them the other week, and it was delicious. And on top of all of this, you, you can also like easily change your delivery days. I know you and I both have our summer vacations coming up, so we're going to be taking advantage of that. Uh, you, you can also change your food preferences, and you can even skip a week whenever you need to just by going to HelloFresh's uh, website, HelloFresh.com. I would recommend going to HelloFresh.com slash TAC80. You can get $80 off. Your first month of HelloFresh when you go to HelloFresh.com slash TAC80 and enter the code TAC80 at checkout. That's it's, it's $20 off your first four boxes just by going to HelloFresh.com slash TAC80 and entering the code TAC80. That's TAC80. We thank them for their support. We are also sponsored today by Third Love. And you can check out their offerings by going to thirdlove.com slash TAC. I've really enjoyed Third Love, mostly because of the idea that, first of all, I don't have to go to a store. And I get to do a Fit Finder quiz that helps me figure out exactly what size is going to fit me. And you might think, oh, well, I know my bra size. But there's so, so many of us that are wearing the wrong bra size. So not only are we wearing the wrong size, but also Third Love has more than 70 sizes. And if it does doesn't actually fit you when it arrives. There's also nobody poking you really awkwardly, which happens in the stores all the time. So once you actually get your bra, if for some reason it doesn't fit, they have a hundred percent fit guarantee. So you can send it back after wearing it, washing it, all that kind of stuff. You can send it back. And if it doesn't fit, they'll send it to a woman who is in need. I love them. I've had, I've really, really enjoyed mine. It has these really cool, like 
oh, what's the word? Like xylophony type straps so that it's more comfortable because it just kind of like supports yet also doesn't cut into my shoulders. It's great. Xylophony? Are you talking like a ratchet strap? Maybe, maybe xylophone's the wrong instrument. What's the one that you, accordion, accordion, accordion. No, that's it. There you go. I'm like <laughs> xylophone. xylophone. So, it, so as you run your fingers down, it, it plays a tune. <laughs> now that would be a feature, <laughs> but you wouldn't pay extra for it because you never pay extra for features or larger sizes with third love. <laughs> you should check them out too, because they have a special offer for listeners of the anger chicken. They are offering our listeners 15% off of their first order. When they go to thirdlove.com slash T a C and go right now and uh, get 15% off your first purchase. Again, it's thirdlove.com slash T a C for 15% off today. All right, let's uh, let's go ahead and talk about the cards that have been revealed in the well, the announcement of Saviors of Uldum. I mean, I'm, I'm I said it before, I'm going to say it again. I'm so excited. There's so much stuff coming in with this. It's like Indiana Jones is held. There's going to be fedoras. It's going to be safari hats. There's fantastic cloaks. And Jocelyn, you know what? There's definitely going to be. There's going to be the deathiest death. Yeah. <laughs> that was another great line from that reveal trailer. <laughs> and it is now on the board. Expect to hear it a lot over the next yeah. few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> so um, quests are coming back for some of us. Well, I think quests are going to come back for all of us, if I had to guess. Because... We've got, we kind of have these lines drawn. We were talking about it earlier between the League of Evil and the good guys. In this case, the League of Explorers. So, if that's the case, we've got Druid on one side and Warlock on the other side. Those are the two quests we've seen so far. So, I expect to get quests across the board. I could be wrong, but this seems to cross enemy lines shall we say well it definitely it definitely does because like my first thought was like oh cool they're gonna give the good guys quests but then that's the second thought, quest yeah, they showed us was Rafam for warlock and i'm like okay never mind that's just out the window within three minutes of listen to hadija give a, a wonderful <laughs> breakdown of what to expect in this expansion um mm -hmm. uh but anyway let, let's talk about it. let's actually talk about the card uh the first the first card we saw uh, in the reveal was a new quest card for druids. It's called Untapped Potential. It's a one-mana legendary druid quest. It reads, end four turns with any unspent mana. The reward is an Osirian tier? Because it's Osiris. So is it Osirian? Because uh, Osirian is o easier Osirian to say. Osirian is how I would read it, but o that's not necessarily right. <laughs> yeah, Osirian is easier to say, but then it's, does, it's not the right pronunciation of Osiris. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, uh, the uh, I'm going to say Osirian for the sake of my own pronunciation. Osirian yeah. tier is a new passive hero power you're going to get if you end four turns with any unspent mana. It's a passive hero power, and it reads, your choose one cards have both effects combined. Which is a powerful effect. I mean, this basically, uh, this and the other quest as well, both their rewards are text that has been tied to cards in the past. So this one comes from Fandral, and Fandral saw a lot of play. So we know it's super powerful. Choose one cards are super powerful anyways. Um, but I think that this specifically is going to depend on what other choose one cards we end up seeing in the expansion. We have some and i think that there's probably a choose one deck that could be built in wild combining this tier uh or sorry untapped potential alongside of fandral and and a whole bunch of other choose one effects that you've got access to in wild but in terms of standard i think uh it's a wait and see for me just to see if there are like something really late game that's super powerful that's a choose one if that card exists in this expansion, then I think untapped potential definitely sees play. And the way that I kind of want to look at this is like, if it read something along the lines of like, destroy one mana crystal after four turns, you get it back or something along the lines. I think that would probably see play, right? Like destroying a yeah. mana crystal and then getting it back on turn five, six, seven, whatever. Like, uh, I don't know. I, I feel like this is, I feel like this could potentially be really good um, because it's also flexible. It doesn't actually destroy a mana crystal. You can do this in four turns or you can do this in eight turns. 
So right, just over the course of the game, um, which yeah. which may happen naturally. You may draw awkwardly, uh, which, which, which is hard to wrap your brain around because you don't want to be in that scenario at all. Right. But you know what would help you bounce back from that scenario is having your choose once cards effects combined. That would help mm -hmm. quite a bit. Now, you know, four turns. You kind of pay in tempo, right? Like, so you're constantly like a turn behind, although Druid also has access to Innervate, which could help kind of smooth that out a little bit, right? Um, so yes. yeah. you, and do, you do pay with tempo early in the game, but then you get a huge tempo swing later on. Uh, I think it's going to depend too how fast the games go. Yes, yeah. I'm, I'm glad you bring up they, they pay with tempo because this is something that Druid has historically always done. They've been doing this by mana ramping. They're spending, er they historically spent early mana turns ramping instead of playing threats. Now, right now, I know folks, like if you've been with us for a short time, they're just tokening. They're just tokening yeah. all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> but not that long ago. It wasn't always like that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not that long ago, they were uh, they were ramping, or at least some druids were. Um, so it's not crazy to think of this being possible in a in a standard competitive deck for druid uh, for them to pull off. It is something they've always done. I think this is a really clever design to influence that type of play without bringing in mana ramp. Mm -hmm. And the chat room right now is asking if the coin would count. And I would say, yes, uh, it would, I assume, work the same way as Innervate. So basically, like, let's say turn one, I have the coin or Innervate and also the quest. I could play the quest and the coin and, and my turn, and I would have one unspent mana gem. It doesn't say anything about having to be, you know, one of the gems that you had at the beginning of the turn or anything like that. It's any unspent mana. So to me, I would assume that Innervate and coin would count, assuming that you, like, play them and leave that mana crystal unspent. Yeah, I uh, was not able to find confirmation that that's the case, but I am assuming the same. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's how I would, because I, I play it, it's available to me, I end my turn, the quest resolves, then the mana disappears, I would assume. Mm -hmm. That that would certainly, yeah. I mean, it, it is it unspent mana. It <laughs> yeah, it, the, it's, the, yeah, it's unspent mana, the, yeah. <laughs> the quest literally says any unspent mana. It doesn't say unspent mana, uh, <laughs> you know, fine print. That would have been there if you had not played other cards that would have given you more mana. Like, that's not a thing on this card. And technically, um, the way that it works is it will... Oh, I guess if you... Hmm. If you play the quest on turn one and then play the coin, I haven't paid enough attention lately, apparently. It highlight it makes a new crystal and highlights it, right? It doesn't refill the existing crystal, which I think Innervate refills the existing crystal, doesn't it? Yeah. Or does it tack more crystals on the end? Oh my god, mm -hmm. I don't know either. Yeah, okay, so... <laughs> Because if it tacks one mana on the end, then I do wonder about how like end of turn effects would then resolve if it would resolve the quest first or if it would, you know, resolve well, the, another, the spell that was cast before the, the end of turn. But well, the other interesting thing is like how... I would assume because it's a druid that it works with Innervate because that would make sense to me. The other interesting <laughs> thing is how, is I look at how overload is calculated because, you know, we're playing with Lickum right now and Lickum gets the attack bonus based on whether you have overloaded crystals or not. And it counts the same turn you played a card with overload, which puts your locks actually below your mana. This I remember because I've been playing with this very recently. Um... You know, it puts the locks below your mana, but it still counts as it still counts and gives like um the the bonus attack. And then next turn, when the locks move up and are actually over your actual mana crystals, like um still has the bonus attack. So you, mm. the overload counts for both the turn that you cast the spell with the overload on it, even though the over you're not technically paying for the overload in that turn. Yes, as far yeah. as the following turn. Um, so I would assume. And I think actually Mana Arms might have might have figured it out. So I think if you play coin then quest, the quest spends the mana given to you by the coin and you have one mana left over. So that I think would a hundred percent work. That would be but interesting. If you play I would quest and then coin, it may or may not work. Yeah. I would really like it to just work either way because that's intuitive and makes sense. Yes. <laughs> but Hearthstone doesn't have a history of doing that. 
Uh, yeah, it so. might be an order thing. And we haven't. It was very much an you know an age of of Ben Brode thing, but the the they they have stated multiple times that they're like just play with them and figure it out. Yeah, which I disagree <laughs> I with <laughs> completely. Um, but yeah, they've been they've been walking back a lot of things that they said they would never do, like mm-hmm. a, a butt ton of card buffs. Uh, so you know. Maybe. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that in the end, it, the order that you should just always do it in is play your extra mana first, then play the thing that you want to play. Then it's absolutely always going to count towards the quest. Um, it's it's wait and see, but I'm I I'm, think it's a really cool idea in a class that could potentially make it work. Uh, I would say the first thing you should do is do both as soon as you can, if you crack this card and email us and let us know. <laughs> I love it. Yes, yeah, you guys, science. Because <laughs> <laughs> I have terrible pack opening luck and probably won't have untapped potential right out the gate. Um, but yeah, whatever the case is, we will figure out how it works. We'll learn how to play with this card. And uh, I like this card. I love this effect. And uh, I'm glad quests are back. <laughs> yeah, I dig it. I dig it. Let's talk about the other quest that they show. They only, only got to look at two quests. Uh, this is called Supreme Archaeology. It's a one mana legendary warlock quest. It reads, draw 20 cards. Reward Tome of Origination. And the Tome of Origination is a new hero power, much like uh, Osirian Tear, uh, but it's an active one. It's two mana, just like most hero powers that we're used to. And it reads, draw a card. It costs zero. <laughs> Yeah. So when I first saw this, I was like 20 cards. That's really dumb. And it's never going to be playable. And what are you doing? Warcraft or Warcraft? What are you doing? Hearthstone? This is crazy. Why 20 cards? Because since it's a quest, you don't get the effect right from the start, which means you have to play it on turn one, which means the cards that you draw as your initial hand don't count. So this quest might as well have read, draw your original deck and then get an effect. That was my first initial gut punch reaction. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) There's many ways around this. The one that they showed us as a new way to help you accomplish this is a new neutral card called Questing Explorer. It's a two mana, two, three rare neutral minion with a battle cry that reads, if you control a quest, draw a card. Now it's a battle cry. You only get it the one time you play this card. Uh, yeah, you could do bounce effects and whatnot, but like, are you winning the game if you're bouncing Questing Explorer back to your to hand? And um, Supreme Archaeology is such a bizarre card because if you just show me this card and I have like five minutes to wrap my brain around it, I go, this card is bad. Like, th- I don't think it's uh, I don't think it's bad though. So I think uh, but, that y- yes. <laughs> I think that this is going to end up in possibly a control warrior ty- or warlock type variant that's going to make use of plot twist, which is something that we never really got to see play. Like technically there is a plot twist warrior out there, but it's not very successful. I think it's actually dead last in the uh, HS replay uh, meta report right now, but what becomes really interesting with plot twist is the fact that you're like drawing all these cards that are going to count towards the quest, but you're not actually depleting your deck. And if you pair plot twist with augmented Alec, then you're actually also shuffling a copy into like a copy of your hand into your deck. So you're not actually like depleting, you're adding more cards, you're you're not going to be all the way at the bottom of your deck by the time this quest actually completes. And the reason that I say Control Warlock might actually make a comeback with this is that they're going to want to be drawing a whole bunch of stuff. They're going to want to potentially be switching up the tools that they have in their hand that maybe they want more copies of for later on. Like they're going to want the game to go long. They're going to want to and actually be able to get use out of a still two mana hero power that then is going to draw potentially very expensive cards crossing zero. On top of that, you could even maybe throw Elysiana into this deck and then draft your last 10 cards being very, very expensive and very, very powerful because you know you can just uh, Tome of Origination, I was going to say tap into them, but Tome of Origination into them. And then your like 
eight mana twisting nether all of a sudden is free. <laughs> so I, I think that there's a control variant of this that could be really cool. And Questing Explorer is a great design card. I love it. <laughs> oh yeah, Questing Explorer, just by like whether Supreme Archaeology is going to work out or not, uh, I think remains to be seen. I never, this, this is the type of card that I just don't want to write off because it could be extremely powerful. Um, but Questing Explorer is just, this is just a good card. It, 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 mm-hmm. It's got great stats for the mana cost, and I like the design of draw being ha- having a condition of, of playing mm-hmm. a quest. Like, if you're playing a quest deck, you're probably going to want Questing Explorer because card draw is just good, and a 2-3 two, for 2 is just good. Yeah, 100%. Like, and the great thing about this, too, is Questing Explorer is going to be a tool for Wild as well because we've got all the Angoro quests, right? So I think this is going to see play across standard and wild i think anyone who's playing a quest deck should be playing this because it's such a natural curve right it's a one mana quest two mana two three replace the two three as well if you're doing hand size related things i I think this is great yeah and and i i waited to mention it because we started going off in other directions but i feel like chat room maybe even listeners home they're like shaking now because we haven't mentioned it yet um plot twist is going to be very interesting with supreme archaeology I mentioned plot twist. Oh, you did? I'm sorry. I, I talked for like a minute about plot twist. I definitely <laughs> apologize. I, I missed that entirely and got very hung up on just Questing Explorer being very good. <laughs> yeah, that's the whole uh, take your hand, shuffle it into your deck, yeah. and then and and draw that number of cards again, which means you're not actually changing the size of your deck, but you are getting the draw a bazillion cards mechanic. Yes. Yes. Now, if only you could guarantee you start with plot twist every game. <laughs> turn one archaeology turn two plot twist turn three plot twist now i get to start drawing cards and playing them for free <laughs> yeah but that's the plot twist is what you pair with elec because then you're shuffling your hand of however many cards into your deck to do the draw mechanic from plot twist and so then copies of the cards that get shuffled back into your deck so basically a copy of your hand with elec will get elec will shuffle it back in so yeah yeah no i'm, yeah, I'm with you i think it's five cards then you get 10 back in your deck and you draw five yeah, yeah. so I mean, control has to be the way to go because of just yeah. removal like how do you survive through that and it's something that i look at warlock i'm like yeah they've got the tools i look at druid and i'm like uh, playing inefficiently with their removal tools i'm not sure it's as realistic so um, but really rad car way to kick the door down, like right in the beginning. Like here's our expansion, by the way, here's two quests. Wrap your minds around this Hearthstone players. <laughs> uh, I'm liking what I'm seeing. It's looking good. Um, anyways, next is plague of death. Uh, and this also kind of kicks off plague cards in general because uh, plague cards are going to be a card theme in Saviors of Uldum. It was mentioned by Hadija in the announcement video um, that, and as she put it, plagues are not known for being picky about their targets. And she went on to say, all of the plague cards in this set have a catastrophic effect that impacts both players. You think the good guys are going to be using plagues, Joss? You think we're going to see Reno's plague and it just heals both players to full (laughs) (laughs) no a hundred percent no and so what just everyone gets tree of life no it's uh definitely going to be i think the league of evils tools i think we're going to see another um lackey twin spell type split in mechanics where you know the league of evil gets plagues and the heroes get something else Uh, but we don't know what that is yet like i said i thought it would be quests but then warlocks got a quest and i was like what? <laughs> so I think uh, plagues are going to be for the League of Evil specifically. I do like that whatever their effects are, are going to affect both or impact both players. So last time we saw this was with projects in Boomsday and they didn't necessarily see a lot of play, but it's still a cool idea. Yeah. Yeah. But let's talk about the only plague that we have seen so far. It's called Plague of Death. The deathiest death. It's a nine mana epic priest spell and it reads silence and destroy all minions. So if if killing everything isn't good enough for you, you get to silence everything too. Yeah. And this is, I think, the the way that priest spells should be, that powerful but also very expensive because essentially what you're getting here is the mass dispel, though without the card draw, combined with a twisting nether, 
which is like 12 mana worth of stuff that you're doing with this one card. So I, I think it's really powerful. I think this is clearly the thing they want priests to excel at is getting rid of stuff. I don't know if it fits into anything like right now, because my first thought again was like some sort of control priest. And it's kind of hard because there isn't really anything. I mean, there's like a mech priest floating around and there's obviously Nomi priest, but Nomi priest doesn't really want to do like plague of death. They just want to draw their entire deck and then they want to know me. So it doesn't really fit. And in Wild, Priest has access to things like Psychic Scream, and I think Psychic Scream just is better unless there's something specific that you don't want your opponent to be doing. And I don't play enough Wild to actually know what like the Wild meta is like right now and if there is a case to be made for silencing and destroying instead of just shuffling it back in the deck. Like, Are there things that pe- they don't want people to do over and over again? I don't know. Then maybe Plague of Death is better than Psychic Scream, but... Priest just has so many tools that do similar stuff to this um, that I'm not sure if Plague of Death will see play, but I do. It, like it's a powerful card. It's just so expensive, which it should be. But it is, and priests have historically found room for expensive removal in their decks. So yeah, they uh, just have so many options in Wild, yeah. and there's currently no priest archetype. And again, currently we've seen literally one priest card now, so maybe something totally turns around for them in the next expansion, but there's no archetype right now that takes advantage of this. Well, so. if, if Supreme Archaeology takes off and l- survives into Wild, if it makes a big enough splash to go into Wild, uh, you would want Plague of Death over Psychic Scream because you wouldn't want to just add more cards to their deck for them to draw for free. <laughs> well, it's it's draw and then play for free. <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, it's hard not to want to kind of play around in the sandbox they just showed us. They're like, here's the sandbox. Yeah. Supreme Archaeology is in it. Don't play in it. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I like it. I like the art. I think this is a really cool card. I feel real bad for all the little desert animals getting sucked into the the sinkhole. But yeah, it seems to be specifically targeting hunters. <laughs> Why did you have to put an armadillo in there? I love armadillos. Right. Uh, but yeah, so I think we'll see. So this is the priest plague. I think we'll still see a shaman warrior, warlock, and rogue version of a plague. But I wouldn't expect to see like a mage plague. No, doesn't fit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, people are still doing Resurrect Priest, so this this mm. is fine. Not only are you the priest in control of when you pull the trigger on this, if you do kill your own minions, probably a good chance you have a way to bring it back. Yeah, the only thing is, um, I mean, yeah, bringing back Res Priest, obviously good. The only thing is with the mana cost of this, it's going to be pretty hard. You're, you're basically passing tempo over, and an empty board over to your opponent, right? Yes. Who hopefully isn't a priest and then resurrects. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's talk about the new keyword that's coming in with Uldum. I keep wanting to say Ulduar, and I have to I know remember <laughs> that it's Uldum. Uh, the new keyword is called Reborn, and how this works is that Reborn minions will return to the board with one health the first time they are destroyed. And the example that was shown is called Restless Mummy. It's a four mana, three, two common warrior minion with Rush and Reborn the new keyword. So restless, you play restless mummy for four mana. You rush it into something. It dies. It comes back with one health. It still has rush and you can then trade into something else or double trade into the first thing you were trying to kill. Right. And I think that that's key. So right now warriors are playing militia commander, which is the four mana five attack, possibly probably leave a body behind, but usually not with a lot of health and only two attacks. So you're kind of looking at like maybe leaving a bad two drop behind. So I I feel like restless mummy fits kind of really well in that package because right now they're running uh, town crier and Zilliax and um, crap. I just said the name and then totally forgot militia commander. Militia, yeah, yeah. Um, Yeah, that's kind of like the rush package in Warrior right now. And I think this might be the kind of thing that we see as possibly a tech card, possibly just an include. I'm not really sure because it doesn't say anything like die at the end of the turn. You could rush the 3-2 in and then just have a 3-1 left on your board. But I, I think this is a really good card. And especially if stuff like token type decks or anything that's going to go wide and relatively small on board, then I think you put in Restless Mummy because you can split your damage between two minions. If things are going a little bit bigger and, and beefier mid rangey type things, then I think you slot in that mission, um, militia commander. So I think it's 
almost like, like this feels like a card to me that's like built for the specialist format where like maybe I've got my primary deck that has militia commander in it and my secondary deck that has restless mummy in it. And depending on who I'm facing, then that's the rush package that I choose. But I think this is a great card. I think it's good to see play. And to me, it, it's a meta dependent tech type choice that you could slot in instead of your militia commanders. I really have almost nothing else to add to that. You were so thorough. I agree with everything you just said. Um, and not only do I think Restless Mummy is just like a really good card, uh, I think Reborn is a really good mechanic. I yeah. am in love with this mechanic. Uh, I I just think it's it's super freaking rad. And I'm I'm it, it's like I want obviously I want to see more cards, but more than anything, I want to see more Reborn cards. Yeah, because I'm I'm kind of curious to see if we're going to see anything that has a death rattle and reborn because then it's like you're going to get the reborn minion, it's going to come back again, it's going to death rattle again. I feel like that could be super powerful. I'm, so, I'm thinking of of uh Thunderhead in Shaman. I don't know why because it's not a death rattle, but it's this type of thing that's a very easy to repeat effect in, in, in Thunderhead. And yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. If, if we get a reborn minion with death rattle on it, it's like, how do you tune that? It has to be a very, a very innocuous death rattle. Yeah. Like I say, I'm just and curious that, to see what they do with it. Cause death rattle popped into my head and I'm like, wow, this is yeah. So first place your brain goes. So it's like, I would completely understand if they never make one because of how nuts it gets in my head when I just kind of play around with ideas real fast. Mm -hmm. but I really want to see it. Like it, it's like, <laughs> so, cause it, our, our brains went to the same place. We, we did not talk about this before the show. <laughs> I had the same thought. I really want to see a, a death rattle reborn minion. If, if nothing else, I just like, it had to be a challenge for them. I want to see what they came up with. Mm -hmm. so. um, chat room is also talking about something kind of interesting, which is something that you noticed is that when they moused over the second copy of the mummy, so the reborn version, it still had the reborn keyword on it. Mm -hmm. So if you it's bounce half that a second, it is, you <laughs> I literally was play pause, play pause, play pause, play pause. Oh, there it is. It still <laughs> says, re it still says reborn. Yeah. I'm interested. So in then, if you bounce it, does it retain that keyword? Like, does it stay reborn? Will it then, you know, I'm, when you bring it back into your hand, be playable as the first version again and be reborn when you kill it? When we talk about these what ifs, listeners at home, <laughs> we are aware that we could be wrong because we do not have a statement in front of us just stating exactly how the card does work. So keep that in your mind with any of these hypothetical situations. But I did take that to be true when, when I, that's what I was looking for. I'm like, does it still say reborn? Because if it does, it means that you could send a copy back to your hand. It would still have reborn and it would still function as if nothing had happened. If you just drew that card from your deck and you're ready to play it for the first time. Yeah, so that'll be an interesting interaction to test once these cards are actually playable, because I think that could be super cool. Yeah. Assuming they, I mean, they haven't printed a charge minion in a long time, but <laughs> imagine nope. you could like run the first half in and then kill it and then it gets reborn and you can hit him in the face and then bounce it back again and then rush it in again. And then, yeah. Jo Jocelyn, I'm just, I'm impressed that Boar is even still in the game. So yeah. <laughs> it, it, with that in mind, I don't, I don't think there's a, a, a bright future for charge. For charge. Minions. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah. So token still has reborn as of right now. I think charge might be the next keyword to get the ax. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to go the way of enrage mm. for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, lackeys are coming back. We know lackeys is going to be coming back because we saw evil totem, a two mana zero two common shaman totem. It reads at the end of your turn, add a lackey to your hand. So much lackey potential, Jocelyn, except not really. It has two health. This will die. <laughs> yeah, and I think so you're going to get one lackey for sure because it's at the end of your turn. So you're going to play this. You're going to get a lackey for sure. One thing we don't know yet is if the pool of lackeys is going to increase because when they first introduced them back in Rise of Shadows, then they said, you know, over the course of the year, you're going to see more of lackeys. You're going to see more lackeys. So we don't know what the pool actually looks like. Right now, the pool of lackeys is 
very strong. It's small. Each of them are very powerful. Very rarely do you get one and you're just like, oh, this is actually useless. So I think that this totem as it currently stands is pretty strong because lackeys are strong. If they, for some reason, suddenly get terrible (laughs) or, you know, there's one or two added in this expansion that are much less powerful to what we saw in Rise of Shadows, then evil totem, not so great. But if the pool stays the same or gets better, if the lackeys introduced in Oldham are decent, then I think evil totem is great because lackeys are great. Yes. Yeah. Lackeys are just good is what it boils down to. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm trepidatious of any totem, you know, kind of post the, the like token shaman nerfs from a while ago. Um, is especially one that's just zero two. I mean, lackey, lackeys are really freaking good though. You are, you are absolutely correct. Um, so I, I don't know where I fall on this one. I've, I've been having such success with shaman right now that I look at this. I'm like, I don't know, know where I put you. Uh, there's nothing I want to take out to make room for you. Evil totem. <laughs> Yeah, this 100% does not fit into current shaman builds because you've basically got like a murloc shaman and then you've got a overload shaman and there's also a control variant out there too. But I think uh, in terms of ladder specifically, we're looking at stuff that's a little bit more on the aggressive side of things. So evil totem doesn't fit in because you're not building around lackeys. But what if the shaman quest has something to do with playing a certain number of lackeys like the old shaman quest that was play a certain number of murlocs? I think it was... 10 murlocs gives you your quest so what if they go in the same vein as that and we have you know play five lackeys or something only if we can call the archetype shacky not even all right all right can't win them all folks they're not all winners (laughs) Um, yeah, interested for sure. Always down for more lackeys. Um, I'm interested in your thoughts about more lackeys because it didn't even enter my mind. I, cause I'd like, I really feel like if they were adding more lackeys that would have been in this video would have been like, by the way, do you like lackeys? We know you do. Cause we know how many of you include them in your decks. Here's some more. Well, they they did say that they were going to stick around for the duration of the year of the dragon, and they did say they were going to introduce some more. So I think it's not a question of if, it's a question of when, and I think we just haven't seen them yet. So again, it's going to depend on how they feel lackeys have been working so far, I think, because they essentially now have the option to strengthen or weaken anything with a lackey tag attached to it. So if they feel that lackeys and their mechanics are too strong, they can very easily put a weak lackey in, in one of these expansions that then weakens like evil miscreant. So I think that it's a really cool mechanic. I'm glad that they're, it's, it's like the Rexar mechanic, right? Like Rexar gets too strong, add super weak beasts. Rexar gets too weak, add some more powerful ones. Like it's the kind of thing that you can play with over time and basically buff and nerf cards without directly buffing and nerfing cards. So I think the idea of a lackey pool and adding more is perfect. I like the design a lot. I think it gives them a lot of space to play around and I'm interested to see where they think lackey balance should go, <laughs> like more or less. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I, I, I would like to, I mean, this, the lackeys are all like kind of so low end on their on their power level um, that there's only so much you could tune within the in individual lackeys. But I, I feel like I would be a little bummed if they just like added just a trash lackey because that then that makes the overall like controlled randomness of generating lackeys feel really spiky. Like, I like where it's at right now. Like for the most part, I'm like, oh, I got the spell lackey, damn. But it's like it's sometimes it's still amazing. Like, so I, I don't I don't know. I, I have to see how they design it, right? Like we're yeah. putting the card. Well, but that's the thing, right? Like, so that that depends on where they think lackey cards are right now. Is you know, like, would is evil miscreant too powerful? Should they add something that is basically dead when you get it to the pool of lackeys? Because, and I mean, I don't think the spell generating lackey is is not powerful. Being able to discover a spell that didn't start in your deck. The fact that it's a discover and not a random, that's so powerful. Then you've got, you know, dealing two damage, like all of these things that are are one mana, which is really what it comes down to, right? These are all one mana minions that have effects tied to them that are much, much more powerful than you should be able to do with one mana because you can't actually play them on turn one, which is kind of key. Um, So yeah, I think 
adding something to the pool if they think lackey the, the lackey meta the lackey cards however you want to think about it if they think that all of that stuff is too strong then yeah you put something weak in the pool if they think it's fine then you keep the power level the same and if you think that they're not powerful enough then you put something in that's like a oh my god this is amazing every time i get it card i don't know what those lackeys look like but yeah tuning of individual lackeys because they cost less or because they cost one mana is going to be very very difficult to do so you don't tune the individual lackeys you tune the pool yeah, no, that's fair. Listen, listen, you, you're, I'm still shell-shocked from Crackle, okay? Uh, they, they've been doing a really good job since Crackle of selling me on RNG within a range. They've done a great job. Discover, lackeys. Uh, I think even at like 10 lackeys, that's still a small enough range, I think. Yeah. I think it's still fine. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and see chat room say Crackle has a range. That's you what just I just like it. That's what I just said. It does. That, but that was like the, the beginning. That's the first instance I can remember of like randomness within a range. And it was terrible. I hate that card. Remove it from the game. <laughs> oh, Garrett. <laughs> it's the worst. It's yeah. the worst. Oh my God. What if they make a crackle lackey? <laughs> what if it's a lackey that deals one to three damage? <laughs> if it's called crackle lackey, I'm into it. I'm, I will okay. allow it. It needs to be called crackle lackey though. Oh, man. Um, yeah, I mean, the only thing I hated more than Crackle was Yog saron Oh, look at our next card. The puzzle box of Yog saron A 10-mana epic mage spell that reads, cast 10 random spells, targets chosen randomly. Ah. <laughs> yeah, I saw this card and I was like, oh, man, Garrett's going to hate this. I love this. <laughs> I love it in theory. If it makes it into competitive Hearthstone, I'm It's 100% going to make it into competitive Hearthstone. 100%. I'm, I'm out. I'm, I'm, I'm done watching Hearthstone Esports. It's been fun, folks. See, the thing is, we never thought that Yogg was actually going to make it into competitive play, and then he did, and it didn't have anything to do with his body. It had to do with his late game, like swing the board win a game you were gonna lose type mechanic so we're gonna see this from random spell generation that mage has a lot of we could see this come off caligos we could see caligos get played and then a free puzzle box like yeah, this is a hundred percent gonna see play cyclone freaking cyclone it's seeing play right this card is already seeing play it's just that the card isn't in the game yet so we haven't gotten it off our cyclones that's very very true cyclone 100 percent is getting played but even if you don't look at it from a random card generation standpoint this is an epic card yog was a legendary you could put two of these in your deck it's a late game oh my god i'm gonna lose button that you can push that you also don't have to build your deck around like i said yog saw competitive play in a deck that also had to play a lot of spells to make yog viable which means that and, and then he could kill himself, which once he could kill himself and it actually turned off his random casting of spells, then he stopped seeing competitive play. This is, as much as it's an RNG card, it's 100% of the time going to cast 10 random spells. The devs did also clar clarify that it can't cast itself because the first thing I thought was, oh my God, what if Puzzle Box casts Puzzle Box that then casts Puzzle Box that then casts, like we're going to have 20 minute turns because of all the puzzle box is resolving but no it can't actually cast itself so puzzle box is not in the puzzle box pool of spells for exactly that reason but <laughs> yog can cast it <laughs> so there's that um but every single time that you cast this card it's going to end up casting 10 random spells which means as much as it's rng it's controlled rng because you know exactly what's going to happen every time is you're going to get 10 random spells cast most of the time when yog would cast 10 spells or less because most of the time he'd kill himself, you'd end up getting a board clear, which is really what this card is all about. I'm so afraid of this card. <laughs> I think we're definitely going to see this card. And especially in a world of specialist format, this is going to be, if not in primary decks, in secondary and tertiary decks for sure. <laughs> uh, I guess I just have to make peace with it, Joss. Yeah, you definitely do, because this card is around and this card isn't going to get played. <laughs> God, they are playing with fire. Yeah. This... Uh, 
Like, am I crazy? Like, to be concerned? <laughs> like, I, I mean, yes, because geez. we've definitely seen random effects like this that are going to dictate who wins and loses. As a Hearthstone pro, I think I'd be super triggered losing to this, but then at the same time, I feel like it feels just as bad to lose to, you know, the the rolls off of Elysiana or the uh, location of a bomb in your deck. Like, there's random what, in Hearthstone. It which, is what the game is. Uh, you as just a, rattled or, off. I think this is awesome. So you just rattled <laughs> off two other. Super entertaining. You just rattled off two other things I would like to see taken care of in regards <laughs> to the current state of Hearthstone. Yeah, I think it's very entertaining as a viewer, personally, but... Um, the, the first time you see it, and then there's two more yeah. games in that, in that mage mirror. <laughs> and, and it all comes down to Cyclones they, making puzzles. They may as well have just given them 10 mana. They each start with this card, and we just, we just play them and move on with our day. <laughs> yep, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think this card's good. I'm, I'm getting dramatic for effect a little bit there will be more to it than that. But mm -hmm. uh, I really did the, the Yogg meta was my least favorite competitive meta in the history of this game. So I'm very concerned about puzzle box of Yogg Saron. Um, we'll see. Yeah. It kind of feels like a Luciana to me. I'm just, we're looking at it. Like we should give them the benefit of the doubt. This won't just take over competitive. Oh, they don't, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I really think it will. Because again, don't have to build your deck around it. It will do the same thing every time, which is cast 10 spells, which means it can't, you know, fizzle the way that New Yogg could with, you know, killing itself with something by accident. So, yeah. They're going I to create a spell that summons Yogg Saran, but it's a new Yogg. It has like Yogg the, the fun killer. And <laughs> when it dies, it cancels Puzzle Box. <laughs> that's how they're going to balance this card there's going to be yeah. a random chance that it summons something that if killed cancels the effect of this card <laughs> I think the way that they'll end up looking at this and balancing it if it needs it is if it does become the kind of thing that will reliably cast a board clear then you know if it does become used too often and too reliable they'll just reduce the number of spells that it casts Bradley. At least it should, in theory, be easy, air quotes, to balance because you can play around with the number of random spells that it casts if it ends up being too powerful, right? Uh, yes, there, there's a, a clear, like, I always use the term knob, like thinking of, like, yeah. volume or levels. Like, there's a clear knob that can be adjusted here, and that's how many spells are cast. Yeah. I love Bradley in the chat room, by the way, who says, this card should start the rope, and the player should have to solve an actual puzzle before it works. <laughs> I love it. That's I love it. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's talk about the final card that was revealed. It's probably the tamest of all of yep. them, but still interesting. Jar Dealer. It's a one mana, one, one common neutral minion. And uh, it, it has a death rattle that reads add a random one cost minion to your hand. Which is kind of nice that it yeah. doesn't just, you know, summon it that, you know, you still have to play it again. I think that's what makes this balanced. I think it's good outside of it. Just, you know, making a one, one token which is what most of the other ones do. But yep, I'm good with Jar Dealer. I think it's fine. It's a good kind of one drop, which is one of the things that I said I was going to miss once we got rid of um, everything from the year of Angoro, <laughs> whatever that was, Mammoth? Mammoth. Yeah, when Mammoth, when Mammoth rotated. Um, that was one of the things I was said I was going to miss was the kind of early game one drop card design. There were a lot of really good one drops from that year. So yep, Jar Dealer's good. Fills that hole. It sounded like you said drug dealer. Jar, 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 <laughs> jar dealer. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, that's fine. Yeah, calling all rogues for combos and anyone who likes magic carpets. There you go. <laughs> yep. No, I like jar dealer. Uh, anyways, that's it as far as the cards that were revealed alongside the announcement of Uldum and the saviors of aforementioned zone in World of Warcraft. <laughs> I can't wait to see the rest of the cards. Like, I, I want them now. I really, really want to see Reborn cards. What yeah. other Reborn cards have you come up with? Like, because Rush, it just seems the most obvious. Like, but you could throw Reborn on something with higher health. But at what point is it, like, not as effective because of taunt? And, like, you're just passing the turn, hoping that, that your opponent doesn't have a clever way to deal with it. 
I don't, I don't know. I want to see this other, I, I just love that keyword so mm-hmm. damn much. I really like resurrect mechanics and this is going to bring resurrect, me- a, 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 a pseudo resurrect mechanic to other classes. Yep. I like it a lot. I dig it. Oh my God. Also just resurrect mechanics of reborn. Oh, oh, Jocelyn. Oh, <laughs> there's a lot of potential here for sure. It's going to be good. It's going to be good, but we, uh, that's going to wrap it up for card talk. Let's, uh, let's take a question or two before we wrap this show up. Hello. Hello. Um, just quickly, do you get my message? Yep. Oh. Hello, brother. <laughs> you can send your emails to tacpodcast at gmail.com. If you're a patron, uh, congratulations, you're in the patron Discord. As long as you have your Discord hooked up to your Patreon account, uh, you can drop messages directly in there, skip the inbox entirely, and that's exactly what Bytes did, B-Y-T-E-S. Uh, on the patron discord and wants to know what do you all want to see new sir finley and new reno cards do i don't know like because i could see like there's so many things you could do with like a reno type effect because i don't think reno has to heal you to full but i do think you should do something based on having no duplicates in your card in your deck yeah, and that's kind of because Rakamar had like a follow up question, which was, uh, do you think the new Reno mechanic is going to have no duplicates in your deck? And I think that um, that's kind of what has become synonymous with Reno more so than the heal effect is, you know, we we called basically all of those single one of decks to be Reno decks. So I think to keep his kind of flavor the same way that like Dr. Boom kept the original Dr. Boom flavor by summoning boom bots, though based on a condition, it would be really cool if Reno was still one of those no duplicates in a deck cards. I don't know what his effect will be necessarily, but I do hope that it's going to be a a build around restriction. Yeah. Yeah. I, I hope so as well. As for Finley, like, like replacing hero powers is very specific. There's not really anywhere else you can, play around with that there's no way to tune that yeah and i i don't know i mean i liked the way that original sir finley worked but i feel like the team might be trying to stay away from hero power manipulation after ganon baku now ganon baku was a little bit different because it was available right from the start of the game so it had the chance to be powerful there was no randomness you knew exactly what you were going to get sir finley with the with the chance at randomness was played by some of the classes with weaker hero powers that might want you know druids and daggers and all that kind of stuff instead of what they had i'm looking at you shaman but sir finley wasn't necessarily overpowered so i think they're probably going to be careful with playing with hero powers but at the same time as long as he doesn't have again baku always on guaranteed type effect he might be okay but then you also don't want to go too far the other way where we had with keliseth where it's like draw it and win you know draw it at the end you lose like all that kind of stuff so yeah there's there's a very fine balance there that could potentially play with hero powers but i don't know unless the new sir finley card very specifically has a i don't know hero power that works like a weapon that after you use it three times it breaks and you get your old hero power back or something like that that might be interesting um oh that's you know what that's clever shit that's really cool something yeah something that i think still plays around with the idea of hero powers but yeah. isn't a, a make or break game thing yeah, yeah, finley was the one that was just perplexing me the most um mm. bran i want to see another battle cry i would love you know what i would love to see for bran i don't care if the stats figured out what's balanced i want his effect to be <laughs> uh minions that are summoned have their battle cries triggered how would you, okay okay so if you are a priest who resurrects a minion with a battle cry. It goes off. The battle cry goes off. Yeah. Okay. Cause I was like, how would a battle cry minion get summoned? But I guess there's so many ways. Rezzing, so, yeah. Yeah. True. Uh, we've had but recruit in the past. That. We've had, yeah. uh, Oh, recruit. Yeah. yeah. We've had play, you know, pull a minion from your hand, you know, all of that, none of that triggers battle cries. True. So brand would help you shore up that weakness in a deck which actually we haven't seen all that much recruiting going on so it could be really cool and the reason you don't see it is because sometimes battle cries are just so powerful so it would be really cool 
to to shore up that weakness of a deck and see people build around that. Oh man, yeah, now I want to see that because I, I feel like it's like a buff to recruiting, which is something it kind of needs. Yeah, I mean, recruit is very specific. Like there's so many ways to like just spawn things onto the board. True, true. Um, so yeah, I just, I think that would be, it's something I've always wanted in Hearthstone. Like it's, it, to me, it's clever, but now that we're so many years in, I'm like, boy, it'd be nice to just let Hearthstone get crazy. Like, <laughs> so that, you know, uh, summoning minions for other means wouldn't feel bad if they don't have a death rattle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, tall man in the chat room is also saying we, c- we could assume that these would be class cards. So priests would not get something like that. That's another interesting assumption. We're assuming that it's going to be class cards, but what if it's not? Because we did see in the Druid quest in that artwork, it's Elise who's actually like doing the casting and stuff on the, on the quest art. What if the quests feature the heroes, but then we actually get four neutral like a neutral Finley and neutral Reno. Like what if these are four neutral league of explorers cards instead of. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think there's any, it doesn't, they don't have to be classes and uh, they probably, they probably will be if, it if seems we go likely, from, right? to ba- just to balance out the whole rise of shadows thing. Like I said, the hero side, the defenders of dollar on, they were not, as memorable they weren't part of the trailer that you know all that kind of stuff so to balance that out a little bit it would make sense if the league of explorers cards were class specific but well maybe they aren't we don't know yet they don't have to be and and, and, and it wasn't it hasn't been confirmed even though it yeah. sure seems to be leaning that way and mm-hmm. I, I don't think it's that big of a deal i think they're going to do what's right for the set uh, yeah but and and maybe if they do become class specific, then they do get to play around more with what would potentially be a powerful effect. Like what I just would, hoped for, gotcha. for brand. Cause if that was neutral, that could get kind of nutty. But if it yeah. was in one class specific that the team put a lot of thought into where it landed and how would impact with the cards available to that class. Yeah. It makes total sense. So I like it. Yep. Yeah. But uh, we have, uh, we have Hachikumo from the discord. Who's also in the chat room. What did he have to have to ask? Uh, Hachikumo says the League of Evil had five members. So if there was going to be a fifth member among the League of Explorers, who would you like to see? So I think first and foremost, obviously League of Explorers was a made up thing, or I guess the four explorers that we had in the League of Explorers was a made up thing for Hearthstone. So there is an Explorers League in World of Warcraft. So these characters with the exception of Bran were creations of Hearthstone. So I think it's really hard to say like, Oh, here's my, or at least I'm not creative enough to be like, here's my crazy explorer idea. But there are some really interesting characters in Oldham in world of Warcraft that I think could possibly fit this role in Oldham as Alliance and Horde. You do a lot of interactions with the Tolvir that are uh, Titan constructs that have suffered from the curse of flesh, which is also where we get gnomes and dwarves from. Uh, and then there's also elementals that you do uh, that you kind of go up against Alakir and everything else. So if they had a Tolvir or an elemental somehow join the League of Explorers, like that to me would be in line with like Sir Finley, like the smart Murloc, you've got all of a sudden the old Titan construct that wants to be an explorer and has, you know, doesn't want to be tied to his old Titan job and expectations of his clan and things like that. That could be really fun. I think we need someone that's truly dumb. All the explorers, <laughs> all the explorers are too smart. We need the lovable oaf. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I want, like the, I want like the fanciest of adventurers, <laughs> man. I want the fanciest looking blood elf. We are like, Oh, that that's a learned professor. And then they just open their mouth and you're like, Oh, you're an idiot. <laughs> well, there is uh so the explorers league in wow is the Alliance side of things. There is a horde side of things that basically does the same thing. They're called the reliquary. They're made up almost entirely of blood elves. I think there's like one orc. <laughs> so they're founded by blood elves, almost exclusively blood elves. So maybe someone from the well, from the reliquary could be uh your idiot blood elf. Maybe he got kicked out <laughs> and, the, and the league of explorers took him in. <laughs> uh, Jocelyn, that's adorable. You think there's still going to be an Alliance in a horde and come the next expansion. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's a whole nother Joss rant that we won't get into tonight. Oh, <laughs> uh, crying out that loud. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah, Chad, I'm not wrong. I mean, it, Reno is kind of the lovable oaf already. Like he's a little bit. very, you know, he, he loves a good dad joke. He's very ha- hammy, you know, um, 
but yeah, I don't know. No one, no one immediately pops to mind. I, I would just like to see a gnome. Yeah, and so Clopper Whizbang, who may or may not actually be related to Whizbang the Wonderful, we don't know. Uh, he was the first gnome to join the Explorers League in WoW, so perhaps he'll find his way over into Hearthstone. Um, but yeah, I was going to say something. Oh, yeah, I guess Harrison Jones is the other character from Oldham who obviously would fit in, I think, is part of the Explorers League and would obviously fit the League of Explorers. We have a Harrison Jones card already, but obviously if we're getting another Reno, another Finley, another Elise, then we'll probably, I guess another Harrison wouldn't be uh, out of the question. I would like that just to see the interaction between Reno and dude I confuse him for constantly, Harrison Jones. (laughs) They like are the same. (laughs) Yeah, it, so much so that when League of Explorers came out, I was like, why isn't he Harrison Jones? And I still never got an answer to that question. Yeah, they they are basically the same. It's it's Hearthstone's version of Warcraft's version of the fictional character that is Indiana Jones. <laughs> Indiana Jones yeah. Yep. yep. So thank you for your questions, everybody. Keep them coming, tacpodcast at gmail.com. Or if you're a patron, drop us a question right in the uh, the patron Discord. That's going to wrap it up. We do have a Patreon, folks, by the way. If you want to support the show, patreon.com slash TAC is the best way to do so. Huge thanks to our producers, Declan H., Sean C., and Cheesy Bob. Thank you for the support. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, we also got swag. You can pick up an Angry Chicken t-shirt. I'd love to see some folks rocking them at BlizzCon when we end up out there literally at the beginning of November. November 1st this year, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Couldn't be earlier and be in November. I thought they were actually going to bump it back a week this year, but they did not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which means I, I got to travel on my wedding anniversary. <sighs> Anyways, it's, it's Halloween, y'all. Maybe I'll ride the plane in costume, but I still will bring an angry chicken shirt. Absolutely, you, you should. You should check them out over shirts.amove.tv. It would help if I mention the website. Uh, you can catch us live Tuesdays at 4 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash amovetv. But before we go, Jocelyn, where can folks find you? Uh, you can find me over on Twitter and Twitch. I'm at Joss Plays. I'm actually going to be playing quite a lot of WoW because we've got a new raid coming out next week. So uh, Sundays and Tuesdays are WoW nights, and then Mondays are something else nights. Sometimes Hearthstone, a lot of Dead by Daylight. I've been playing a lot of Dead by Daylight. So uh, yeah, go check out the stream, twitch.tv slash Joss Plays. Nice. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying 8.2. That new zone is, well, both new zones are pretty, but Najatar is very much my jam. Yeah, me too. Hundred percent. Everyone's like, "Oh, Mechagon's so great." I'm like, "Meh." <laughs> sunken Elven give me, Ruins. Give me Sunken Elves. <laughs> Get out of here. Get out of here. I mean, I do like Mechagon. It looks very cool, but but Sunken Elven yeah. Ruins. Dog. Yeah. And uh, I'm on Twitter at Garrett Art. All the podcasts, this one included, can be found over at amove.tv. Into the Nexus is still going strong. We're going to be talking about Heroes of the Storm as long as it is still a game that is updated and people are really excited about it. Which of our, you know, audience. And the frequent updates of that game, despite the fact that it no longer has an eSport or, or, or any indication, that game is going to be going for a while. Uh, Let's Talk About Star Wars is now weekly. A new episode just posted this morning. So you can go hear me uh, be sad that I didn't go to Galaxy's Edge while Tom Merritt and Jenny Josephson talk about their experiences at Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. It's a two-parter, by the way. Part one went up today. Part two will go up next week. And uh, yeah, you know, follow me on Twitter. Hear my ramblings on there at Garrett Art. That's going to do it for this episode of The Angry Chicken. We'll be back next week. I have a feeling we're going to have like some cards to talk about, maybe. Probably just a couple. Yeah, yeah. But until then, job's done. Job's done.